Hey everybody, welcome back to another Entity Framework Core tutorial. This is part of a series, by the way, if you haven't watched the other ones, I recommend you do so. That way you're kind of caught up in what we've been doing. And I'm using a better mic today, so, you know, if you've watched some of my other videos, let me know what you think, if this is any better sound quality or not. Uh, so we started with making our SQL database and defining it with Entity Framework Core. And then we did a few other things we wrote to it. And we also talked about some validation. And today we're going to read from it. Even though in the last video, if you've been following along, I mentioned that we would talk about updating. But I don't want to update until we're able to view the data other than in the database. I want to show it in our application. And uh, that's where we'll focus on today. We'll just show the data in a table. Um, so here is our data in our SQLite database that we've added so far with our form using Entity Framework to put it in here. And I want to display this somewhere in our web app and I'll show you how I plan to do that. By the way, if you're in the need for a standing desk, maybe you got a new home office or you just need a better desk, this is the one I use and I thought I'd recommend it to anyone that might care. Uh, it'll be linked down in the description if you wanna go check it out. It's huge desk. It's got this nice wood finish and uh, it's, a, it's a standing desk. It has four different settings to save heights and whatnot. And uh, I'll have it down below if you wanna go check it out. And yeah, one last plug. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe. We're getting close to 500 and I'd really appreciate it. So let's hop over to our application and let's just run it just to refresh our memory. I know it's been a few days since my last video, but I always like to refresh my memory because my memory's pretty crap sometimes. So here's our web app, nothing on the home screen. Uh, by the way, this is ASP.NET Core and we hit add users and this is the form. But what I wanna do underneath, I just wanna display all of the users and some kind of table. And the table we're gonna use is actually from Bootstrap and uh, we're gonna use their styling to make our table look nice. So enough with that. What I wanna do is every time that page is loaded, I want to go ahead and load up the data using Entity Framework, and then we're going to display. It's actually really, really simple. So let's talk this through. Uh, add users is the action to that view. So what I wanna do is actually going to be, so what I wanna do is actually going to be contained in this action right here. This is the get action, if you remember, and this is the post action. So this will pick up whenever someone enters on the form, they hit that submit button and it'll go through this code. And whenever someone just loads a page, that's what happens right here, loads this particular, particular view. So what I wanna do is I wanna create a list of, we have our user model. Let me go ahead and close these. They're kind of getting in the way a list of user model objects, and this is what's going to hold when we call the database using Entity Framework to hold all of our uh, models or our objects that we're going to display parts of on our Razor page. So that's what makes Entity Framework really cool. If we were using SQL, we would say, you know, select this, and then we create an object, we assign properties to different values, and it would take a lot of work and a lot of time. Uh, but in this case, when we create this and we use Entity Framework, it's going to be super simple. And I think you'll be, if you haven't done this before, I think you'll be very surprised. So, uh, so we're gonna create a list of user model called users, I guess. And uh, it's going to be a new list of user model. Okay, and next we're going to be using our uh, Demo context, yeah, that's what's called. So var db equals new demo context. Just like what we did when we added users with the post method. So now we can go ahead and use any framework to just get us from our database uh, all the data from the users table and it'll place it into a list of already defined objects for us, which is great. This is how simple it is. So we're gonna say users is equal to db dot users dot to list. And if you remember, if we go back to our demo context, we can see that's where we defined it. We defined users uh, when we went and set up the context. So let's go back. And now the last thing I wanna do is I wanna put it in the view bag for this view because I wanna be able to retrieve it in the razor page. And I'm going to say viewbag.users is going to be equal to our users. 
So what this is doing, it's not using any where clauses. I think in the next video, I'll go ahead and make this two separate videos. I don't want this to be too long, but in the next video, we're gonna talk about using where clauses. So let's say we just wanted to retrieve one where name of the user was equal to this or their ID was equal to this. We'll talk about that in the next video, but this is pretty simple. It's just grabbing every single thing in our users table right here. Okay, so I think that's all we have to do in the back end as far as I can tell on our controller. So let's go ahead and let's go to our add user .cshtml. And here's where it's gonna get a little fun. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make a div and I'm gonna give this a class of container. And then the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to say, and I'm going to use the at sign uh, to tell it, hey, this is C sharp code. I'm going to say, hey, um, if the view bag dot users is not equal to null, do what's inside of this. So I guess another check I want to do, though I can't think of a scenario off the top of my head where this kind of applies, but just to be safe, I'm going to say and view bag dot users dot count is greater than or equal to one or greater than zero, okay? And then inside of this, that's where we're gonna put our HTML for our form because if this, you know, is passed, it's going to do whatever's in here. And if we write HTML, it'll start displaying that HTML if that's true. So I'm gonna create a table and let's go ahead and go to Bootstrap real quick just to see what their table setup looks like. So on bootstrap.com, here are the different tables. I kind of like the dark table. You can choose if you're following along to do whatever you know style you want, of course, but I'm gonna stick with. So instead of wasting time typing this all out, I'm just gonna copy it and let's just put that in here. So let's think about some of the things I want to show. Let's say I wanna show age, name, and username on this table. And I'm gonna go ahead and just keep one row. And I'll tell you why here in a second. But let's take out these other rows. And let's, I guess, first work on the header. So I wanna say age, or maybe we'll put name first. That makes more sense. Name, age, and what I say, username. And then we'll delete this row. And then here, I'm not gonna write out each individual table row because that wouldn't quite make sense. Instead, I'm gonna say for each, var user in view bag dot users. Once again, do what's inside. So we're gonna cut this and put it inside this for each loop. And then what we can do is we can reference different parts of the user in this and it'll keep creating this HTML, this table row, as there's still things in the view bag dot users um, list. So I don't need this. And then here, I'm gonna do at, and then username, I think it's spelled this way, though I don't know if that matters. And then at user.age, that's probably capital A. And then at user.name. Okay, so I think, I think this will work, we'll find out. So let's hit run. And then I think I put a breakpoint, but let me just make sure. No, I did not. I thought I put a breakpoint. So let's put a breakpoint right here. So once I hit the link at the top to get this page, uh, it should hit that breakpoint. There it goes. So let's hover over users and make sure this makes sense. So we have three, which makes sense, right? Because we only have three rows in the database table. And test one, Joe. Jdo and age is zero because we didn't add that until last video. So the first two in here didn't have an age. The only one that has age is one of the Jdos. <laughs> so I guess we have two. So it should be the very last one has an age. Yeah, that looks good. So the only other thing we have to make sure is if it displays correctly. So let's hit continue and check that out. Yeah, the spacing's a little screwed up, um, but look at that, it shows all the data now from our database using any framework. We grabbed all the data, we put it into a list of user model objects, and then we easily displayed it on our Razor page. So it's really sweet. So in the next video, what I wanna do is I wanna put search bar somewhere. 
and let's say I want to be able to search by name. I want to say, give me where name is equal to Mike. And then we'll use Entity Framework to create that where clause, and then we'll display it accordingly. So thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Like I said, if you like this kind of stuff, don't forget to hit subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next one.